Hi, fellow developers. Uh, I'm delighted to uh, welcome you to Marcel's and my session. <laughs> Today, uh, I would like to show you some of the new benefits where with the CDS7 version when it comes to uh, our protocol adapters. And then Marcel will also show you uh, how to use our open source GraphQL adapter. We already look at the documentation uh, for the new feature. Uh, for now, I will restrict myself to the protocols uh, which are served by the CDS runtime out of the box. Um, later on, Marcel will show you more. Uh, most of you are most probably uh, already familiar with the protocol and the path annotation. Uh, for those of you who are not, uh, the path annotation specifies the service path uh, at which your service is served and the protocol specifies which protocol is used. Uh, with this, uh, I think we have looked at the documentation for long enough. Uh, I will jump to the uh, demo right away. Let me quickly open the catalog service. Uh, most probably also know uh, this example. It's our uh, famous bookshop sample. Um, just start it. Okay, now it's running. I have prepared a few uh, sample requests uh, that I would like to show. Uh, jump back again. Uh, you can see it, the default uses the browse annotation. Um, for the path, you don't. Uh, we don't have not specified any protocol, so the default or data protocol is used. Back to the requests. Um, as you can see, I have prepared a few samples, and you might already see the uh, comments: uh, old default, new default. Uh, uh, the bigger. Just to see also the the response better. Uh, um, this was the old default before. Uh, we have always served it at slash browse. Uh, with uh, CDS version seven, we have changed this. So it's a breaking change. Uh, um, heads up! Uh, if you have not adopted yet, uh, the new default is with the path uh, with the protocol prefix. You can see it here with odata slash v4. Um, before I come to the reasoning, I will quickly show you how you can adapt your implementation to restore compatibility. Um, from now on, the path annotation um, differentiates uh, between absolute path and relative path. The absolute path will not include the uh, protocol prefix anymore. So if we now go back to the requests, you can see this. I'll send this request, including the protocol prefix again. Now this is not working anymore, but uh, compatibility is restored. Yeah. Um, so if uh, you have to stick with your path for whatever reason, you can uh, simply adapt the path annotation or introduce it for compatibility. Yeah. Now coming back to the reasoning, why have we introduced this change? And we basically have three reasons. First reason is that uh, we uh, want to avoid hassle with uh, the static resources of the Fiora Elements uh, websites. Uh, they also are usually served at slash, and we had some trouble in the past uh, to differentiate. Second reason is uh, we uh, align with the Cup Java stack. They always uh, had the uh, protocol prefix within the service path. And the third reason, which is one of the new features that I would like to demonstrate today, is uh, we want to enable uh, serving one service at multiple protocols. In the past, this was also possible with some workarounds. To be honest, uh, ugly workarounds. You had to copy your complete service definition, annotate it with uh, another protocol, um, specify, of course, uh, also a different path. Uh, uh, could be browse two, for example, and this would also work. You know, so, but you would have blown up your CDS model, you have blown up your season, and you have blown up the database artifacts. Yeah. So, uh, because for e each entity within the service definition, a view is created on the database, and this will lead to longer deployments and 
not nice. So what we have implemented with uh, oh, scroll order, um, we have uh, enabled the uh, protocol annotation to also allow sets of uh, or a list of uh, protocols. So we can now specify or data v4. We can specify rest and. Uh, when doing this, uh, we must ensure to not use an absolute path because if it's an absolute path, we cannot differentiate anymore which protocol must be served. I'll save it again. And what you can see now is, uh, I'm back here to my uh, requests. Uh, if I send the request for the REST browse endpoint, you can see it here, it works. We have kind of a similar service document for the REST uh, adapter implemented like OData. So looks kind of familiar, but is custom made. Uh, you will also see for OData, the service document call works, uh, but it does not work uh, for the old default anymore because we cannot differentiate as said. Um, if you want to specify, uh, sorry, man. Uh, here. if you want to specify custom path uh, for the protocols, this is also possible. So you can, for example, convert the string protocol to an object, specify kind or data, and change the path to, let's call it loop. Uh, you will now see if I restart, I will back my requests, uh, and for example, if I send this request now, you also see it works. Uh, and for REST, it's not changed. For REST, it stays with the path annotation. And of course, you could also configure a, a custom path there. Um, with this, I am done with my part. And I would like now to hand over to my colleague, Marcel, who will show us how to plug in the GraphQL adapter, how it works internally, and gives us a short demo of some of its capabilities. Okay, yeah, thank you very much, Johannes. All right, so now that we've seen how we can use uh, the add protocol annotation with ODATA and REST, yeah, I'll show you how you can use the GraphQL adapter. So if we go back to the documentation page, uh, we can see that there is a link to uh, CAPJS GraphQL, and this is our open source repository on github.com for the GraphQL adapter. So if we scroll down a bit to the readme, we can see that there are some steps on how to get started. So the main step is to npm add uh, CAPJS GraphQL. So let's just do that right now. While that's loading, let's go back. So we can see the next steps are to run CDS Watch as usual and to annotate your service. I'll just uh, go to the admin service and add my add protocol GraphQL annotation, or we can actually also just use the shorthand of just specifying at GraphQL. So now let's restart the server. And if we now go to uh, localhost slash GraphQL, uh, we can also see this here. Uh, this is the default path where uh, GraphQL is served. And we have this um, this third party UI called GraphQL, uh, which allows us to explore our uh, our endpoint and to send some queries. So before I do that, I would like to give you a brief overview of um, of how the adapter works behind the scenes. So the CAP compiler takes your CDS files, uh, creates a season of them, which is our internal representation of the data model. Uh, and the GraphQL adapter um, converts this to its type definitions. So this is all done when bootstrapping the server. Uh, resolver functions are also created for each service. Um, and then at runtime, uh, when we have an incoming query, this is um, the query is validated against the schema, 
um, and the corresponding resolver is executed and the resolver builds a CQN object, which is sent to the database. Uh, and this is the same CQN object that would be created by OData or REST, for example. Yeah, so if you are familiar with GraphQL, you might know that uh, it's relatively flexible in how to or how you specify your API. So there is no specification like in OData. So what we have done is with a colleague from a different team, Ralf Handel, we've come up with a uh, with some common patterns that are out there with GraphQL and some and combined those with cap uh, uh, features and create a generic API that is served. All right, so let's go back to graphical and we can start playing around with our uh, our service. So we have this um, graphical query builder that's included here, uh, which is also third party. Uh, and I'll use this to quickly build the queries. So I'll create the admin service, authors, and I want to get the ID and the name of an author. So if I run that, we can see we get exactly the same structure back that we just requested on the left side. So now let's create a little more complex query. So I'll also add total count, uh, which is um, the same thing as uh, OData's dollar count. And I also want to expand, or I want to query the field books uh, with ID and title. And that's basically the same thing as dollar expand with OData. So if we do that, we of course get back our authors and the corresponding books that they wrote. And we can see a total count for this over here. All right, so uh, now that we've seen how to query all the data, I'll show you how you can query specific data by filtering. Um, so what we want to do is um, I created a new query over here. Again, on authors, I want to get back ID and name. And let's see, so we have this first author with an ID 101. So let's filter by ID equal 101 and send that query. And as you can see, as you would expect, that's what we get back. Um, now you can also do uh, or combine filters logically. So what I want to do is I want to get back um, filters or, or IDs between two values. Uh, let me just see which IDs we have. So let's do 106 and 160. So we want greater than 106. Oops and less than 160. And as we can see now, we have those values as expected. OK, so now that we've seen basically how you can query data, we'll move on to mutations. Mutations are uh, GraphQL's way of modifying data. Um, so I would like to quickly show you how you can create a new author. So let's, um, yeah, let's do that. Um, so we're specifying this input object with a ID and name, and we are, can also, or we have to uh, select which data we want to get back as a result set. So let's again get back ID and name. And as we can see, an entry was created. Uh, what we can also do is we can create multiple entries at the same time. So let's do that. Um, so I need to change the ID. I'll change the name and two entries were created. Yeah, so that's how a create mutation works. So let's uh, let's create an update. So I would like to update the author. So we here we can see we have the same filter like with a read query. Um, so I want to filter for the ID uh, 101 and for input similar to create, we can just specify a new name so uh, and select the fields I want to get back. And as we can see, we want to update the entry 11 with the name Charlie. And if you run that, yeah, that's what we get. All right, um, so I could also show you uh, how delete works, but it's not that interesting and in a matter of time I'd like to show you something else because 
it just works the same way with a filter. So instead, I would like to show you behind the scenes a little bit how um, the adapter works. So if I go back to VS Code and uh, open the read resolver, I'll set a breakpoint over here and execute this query with the filter down here. So now what we get is, um, yeah, we're at this breakpoint. Uh, as you can see, uh, or as you might recognize, these are the cap query APIs. So we're creating a select with columns that are parsed from the GraphQL AST. So that's what this function does. Uh, we evaluate the filter, order by, top, and so on. Uh, and now if we go to a debug console and just uh, print the query, uh, this is the CQN object we can see that was created from the query. So we're creating admin server as authors, the column's ID and name, and we have an where expression that uh, corresponds to the filter that we set. So we can also just jump to the next result, look at uh, our next line, look at the result, and of course that's what we get back from the database. All right. Yeah, um, I'm a little faster than I expected, so we do have some time to do something else. Um, of course, all the usual cap features work, so I can just show you, if I disable my breakpoint, um, I can go to the headers tab and, for example, add the accept language header and said, send a query here. Oh, maybe I should query books instead. It's better to see what happens. Um, so it's ID and title. And as you can see, we get back the localized version of the entry. So Sturmhöhe. Yeah, so maybe a different feature that is common in GraphQL is um, variables, so we also support variables. So here in this query, I'll uh, extract the filter as a variable. So I'll click this button over here. And as we can see, a filter variable was added. This is a default value, but we can maybe cut that uh, and add it down here as a JSON payload uh, where we specify filter. Now, if we run that, we can see we get the same result back, but we separated our query from the parameters that we want to use. So now that's how you can reuse the same query, but modify the filter, for example. Yeah. Um, nested filters are also possible. Uh, I don't really have a good example right now, but um, you could also apply a filter to this nested books, for example. So that's also possible uh, if you would like. So now I think <laughs> there is not much time left. Um, so I would just like to point you back to our GitHub re repo. It's open source, so feel free to look around the code. Uh, we have a lot of tests, so the tests also serve as documentation in a way. You can see which queries and features are possible in more detail um, and yeah maybe if you're interested uh, you could even contribute if you're so inclined yeah thank you very much and that's all from us perfect thank you johannes and, uh, and marcel on the minute nearly okay any questions here in the room Just one question, um, how can I incorporate uh, or include my, my own protocol into the game? Yeah, so um, uh, I don't know if we have documentation to create your own or if you would like to. <laughs> uh, let me quickly double check whether we have this documented already. Uh, I don't think so. It's in the, in the make, uh, am I audible? Yeah, it's it, yeah, it, it's in the making. Uh, uh, so we will add it soon to the documentation. Uh, basic thing is 
mostly like uh, Marcel has shown, uh, you take whatever protocol is yours uh, and the protocol adapter needs to convert it to CQN and then uh, you can send it to the application service and it will take care of the rest, uh, including input validation, transaction handling, everything is taken care of. Um, but yeah, documentation is still missing. So.